everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of Brewing with 50 Bucks. I'm Stefan coming to you from the General Warfare headquarters in my apartment. Well, I should kind of say soon to be former apartment. I'm going to be moving apartments at the beginning of next month. So if I miss a week or if I miss a video upload, you have quite the fair warning in advance. That being said, we have a brand new brew for you today. These have been quite popular on this channel lately. My Sarolf video has hit over 480 views on the channel, which may not seem like a lot, but for me, it's a grand accomplishment since that is the most viewed video on my channel at this point in time. So thank you so much to everybody who took the time to watch that video. I truly appreciate it. It means a whole lot. With that being said, I actually confided to with a bunch of my friends and my group for actual brew ideas for this video. And one of them actually came with a funny idea. So this brew is dedicated to you, Adam. He suggested this one and we're going to take a look at it. So today's deck tech is on Zergo Helm Smasher. So Zergo is a fairly popular commander in Mardu colors. So Mardu is the clan name for the clan that represents red, black and white. Zergo is a fairly common commander, as I just mentioned to you before. He actually, you may know him quite a bit if you know Commander or if you have been playing Magic for a while, you know him. He's one of the main generals in the Cons of Tarkir block, I presume. I'm not, I don't remember what set Zergo is actually from. Nonetheless, I'm getting a little bit off track and we have a long video for you today. So let's get a look at Zergo without further ado. So Zergo Helm Smasher is a 7-2 for two red, white, and black legendary orc warrior with haste, Zergo Helm Smasher attacks each combat if able. Zergo Helm Smasher has indestructible as long as is your turn. And whenever a creature dealt damage by Zergo Helm Smasher this turn dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Zergo Helm Smasher. So this deck is not focused on board white tribal like most other Zergo Helm Smasher decks would be. I have an interesting idea and I wanted to capitalize on it. So for this deck tech, we're going to be focusing on one specific card. It's Sunforger. Sunforger is a equipment for three. Equip creature gets plus four plus O oh, and you can tap red and white and untatch Sunforger to search your library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less and cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then shuffle your library and equip three. So this deck is focused on getting Sunforger out as efficiently as possible. Equip it to Zergo, swing for at least 11 damage. There is a lot of big hit cards in this deck, fair spoilers. Well, we're gonna get to them in just a quick second, but you wanna hit very hard, you wanna hit very fast, and you wanna be able to protect Zergo. That's the main focus of this deck. So as always, each one of these decks has a budget limit of $50. This excludes basic lands, but includes the price of the commander in the deck. We have eight categories to go through in this deck tech, so we're gonna get started with our Sunforger finds. We have Sunforger out, now we need to cast things with it. So first we have Arcbond. Arcbond is a very fun card, especially if you're gonna be hitting a, an opponent's creature. If they're gonna block and Zergo does not have Trample, you just play this and each one of their creatures and each player gets hit for at least 11. So scary time. It's at least a quarter of your opponent's life lost at that. It's at least a quarter of your opponent's life at that. Plus since Zergo has Indestructible, he won't die from the Arcbond damage. Next we have Boros Charm. Now this is a multifaceted card where it can deal 4 damage to a player or planeswalker. Zergo can gain double strike till end of turn or permanents you control gain indestructible till end of turn. You can multifacet this uh, to killing a planeswalker or dealing 4 damage to a player which is probably the least uh, helpful mode on this card. You can give Zergo double strike, which is going to be very scary since Zergo is already 7 power, so he'll hit for 14, 7 and 7 from the double strike. And you can always protect yourself from a board wipe with permanence you control gain indestructible till end of turn. Very multifaceted card and very ne necessary in this deck. Next we have Crush Contraband, which is a very helpful card with getting rid of pesky entra enchantments or artifacts, or you can even do both, hit an artifact and an enchantment with this card. Next we have Dawn Charm. This is mainly used for its counter spell ability. Yes, we are breaking the color pie with this card, considering this 
Lapse of Certainty and Manatithe are our three counter spells in the deck. But it's not only used for its counter spell. You can also Fog, which is the prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. You can also Fog with this and nullify your opponents from getting that one hit mega swing kill on you. Or you can regenerate Zergo if he ever gets destroyed and it's not your turn. Next we have Deflecting Palm, which is a fun little pet card I love to use. This is a fun card if you're going to be targeted for a vast amount of damage. You can redirect the damage to its source's controller. So let's just say a Comet Storm is hitting you for 10. You just play Deflecting Palm and that 10 will go to your opponents instead of to your face. Next we have D-Spark, which is exile a permit with mana cost 4 or greater. Always helpful to get rid of something very big and very scary on board. Plus the fact it gets exiled. Very few cards retrieve cards that are exiled already. So now having the ability to permanently get rid of a threat is always in your favor, especially when you can get it out for free. Next we have Generous Gift, which is slowly becoming a staple card in white. It's basically Beast Within, but for mono white. And instead of giving a beast to his controller, you're giving an elephant instead. Hide and Seek is a fun little card which I just real I just found out about. Now you can always put a target enchantment or artifact on the bottom of its owner's library, which is kind of funny in itself as an instant. Or the one part I will be using mostly with this deck is Seek. You'll be using Seek to get rid of something out of your opponent's deck, and you gain the life based on the converted mana cost. So you just trudge through their deck, you find their most heavily costed card in the deck, you gain the life, and they have to shuffle it away. Or you could just get rid of a combo piece. This is also really, really good to do that too. Next we have Master Warcraft. I remember seeing this card in my first circles of EDH and in my first few games. This is basically you get to choose how combat works. So you get to choose which creatures attack and which creatures block. So, so if you plan to kill an opponent this turn and they want to block, you just play Master Warcraft and you basically get kill them with that one turn. Mortify is another removal spell which gets rid of a target creature or enchantment altogether. Path to Exile is you get to exile a creature and its controller puts a basic land onto the battlefield. Tapped. Next we have Rakdos Charm, which is the secondary card that has multimodals. With this, your first mode is exile all cards from a target player's graveyard. The second is destroy target artifact. And third is each creature deals one damage to its controller. Now, I've seen Rakdos Charm mostly used for its exile all cards from a target player's graveyard ability, and very rarely used as a destroy target artifact, but in recent game nights, from uh, the command zone, I've seen Rakdos Charm try to be used for its last ability to have each creature deal one damage to his controller. Unsuccessfully, but this got me thinking this can actually be a very good way of getting rid of somebody if they're playing a token deck and they try to swarm you. You play Rakdos Charm and you can kill them depending on how many creatures they have on the field and their life total. This is, a, this is just a one hit kill, or I should say a one shot kill. Now, Shelter allows you to protect Dargo from any color of your choice till end of turn, and you get to draw a card, which is very helpful. Tainted Strike is a win con in this deck, giving Zergo plus one plus zero and infect till end of turn. Why deal 21 commander damage or get rid of 40 life from somebody when you can just deal 10 damage altogether and just kill them with infect? I love infect, and sneaking this into an attack that goes unblocked is extremely good since Zergo can at least swing for at minimum eight poison. Next we have Teamer Battle Rage, which gives double strike to our target Zergo. And it with its ferocious ability, since Zergo has power four or greater, it get, gives Zergo Trample, which having a hasty trampley double strike Zergo is very, very, very scary for our opponents. Terminate gets rid of a creature on board and it can't be regenerated. Utter End is another exile, but for this one, it's a target non-land permanent. Wearer Tear is basically a crush contraband for red as well. And Wild Ricochet lets you copy a spell and you can choose new targets for it. Next, we have our Equipment Tutors. These will help us get Sunforger and any other equipment we need from the deck. Starting off with Axe Guard Armory. This is one of the new lands from Kaldheim, which I love extremely. Despite the fact it coming to play tapped, it adds a white, but the second ability on it, having to tap one red, red, and white, and tap and sacrifice it. Ultimately, you're losing five mana off this exchange, but you get to search your library for an aura or equipment, reveal them, and put them into your hand. 
So this is one way of getting your Sunforger, or if Sunforger's on the field already, this is one way of getting your other equipments. Next, we have Goblin Engineer, which lets you put an artifact into the graveyard, and then you can sack and replace it with target Sunforger, or whatever card is in your graveyard at the time. Open the armory is search your library for an aura equipment and put it into your hand, just like Axe Guard Armory, except for two and not wasting a mana. Relic Seeker is a bit slower. It's a 2-2 for one and a white with Renown, so whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it has to become Renowned, and then when it becomes Renowned, you get to search for that equipment. Next is Stone Hewer Giant, which is the most expensive card in this deck, coming at $3.50. However, it is a 4-4 with Vigilance, so it can swing, and then you just pay one and a white, and then you search your library for an equipment, and you can attach it immediately to whatever creature you want it to attach it. So you can attach it to Zergo immediately if you want to. And lastly, we have Tajnar Swordsmith. So whenever it comes into play, you have to pay X, and if you do, you get to search for equipment with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Next, we have our big hits cards. We want to hit hard, and these cards will let us do that. First, we have Battle Mastery, which gives Zergo Double Strike. As I mentioned to you previously in multiple deck techs, Double Strike is very strong, especially in Voltron builds like Zergo. Next, we have Berserker's Onslaught, which if you've seen this channel before, you know this is becoming a pet card of mine. Attacking creatures you control have Double Strike. Next, we have Bitter Feud. This is another funny little card. Whenever it comes into play, you choose two players, and whatever source uh, deals damage to one of those, it deals double the damage to either its controller or permanents they control. So you get to choose two of your opponents, and they basically have double damage on them as long as Bitter Feud's on the field. Blood Mist is you get to choose a creature that has double strike at the beginning of your combat step. Curse of Bloodletting is like Bitter Feud, except it's only on one enchanted player. So, and whenever a source would deal damage to that player itself, not the creatures as well. Dictate of the Twin Gods has always been a pet card of mine. You can flash it in and it'll deal double damage to any permanent or player. Next, we have Duelist Heritage, where you can have attacking creature and gain double strike until end of turn, aka target Zergo. Next, we have Madcap Skills, which gives target Zergo plus three plus O and Menace. So Menace means you can't have less than two creatures blocking Zergo. If they only have one creature, you're going to go ham with the, with Zergo. And if you somehow get to snipe out a Tainted Strike, you're killing that player on that turn. Next, we have Obosh the Prey Piercer. I very much considered having Obosh as a companion to this deck, but I realized the amount of cards that are even costed in this deck is way too much. That doesn't matter considering Zergo is still an odd converted mana cost, so it still would, would deal the double damage. Next we have our equipments. We like Sunforger, but these equipments will help us bulldoze through opponents. First we have Assault Suit, which gives plus two plus two and haste. Kind of redundant with Zergo, but it can't attack you or a Planeswalker you, you control and can't be sacrificed. And the caveat to this is at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of equipped creature until end of turn, if you do untap it. So, so Zergo basically becomes fun little prey for all your opponents who can't attack you with it. And it'll give plus two, plus two. So it'll become a nine, four, al along with having to attack each turn. And next we have Colossus Hammer, which is a one CMC artifact equipment with equipped creature gets plus 10, plus 10, and loses flying and equip eight. So if you manage to get the eight mana on the field to equip it, you're already winning the game. This is just overkill and I love overkill. Next we have Inquisitor's Flail, which is double damage with Zergo. The only caveat to this is Zergo will be dealt double damage as well. Next we have Luxodon Warhammer, which is, is plus three plus zero, oh, trample and lifelink. So you get to gain some life back off the exchange. Next we have Mask of Abyssin, which gives plus one, plus two and hexproof. We need a lot of protection with Zergo, considering on our turns, he doesn't become indestructible. So people will try to destroy him by single target removal. So we need some form of protection. Next, we have Mask of Memory, which allows you to draw two cards whenever you connect with Zergo. Next, we have Whisper Silk Cloak for equip two and converted mana cost three. Equip creature can't be blocked and has Shroud. This is a very common equipment in most decks considering it, the ability of giving it unblockable and having Shroud so nothing can target it. 
And lastly, we have the funniest card in this deck, World Slayer. Yes, I decided to put World Slayer in this deck. World Slayer is whenever an equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you destroy all permanents other than World Slayer. Since Zergo is already indestructible, he'll be equipped with the World Slayer and everything will go. I mean, everything will go. Lands, artifacts, enchantments, your board, my board, everybody's board, all gone, except Zergo and World Slayer. Next, we have our board wipes. Zergo will be indestructible on our turns, so why not get rid of everyone else's creatures? We're running four board wipes in this deck. The first is Austere Command. For four white white, you get to choose two. You get to destroy all artifacts, all enchantments, all destroyed creatures with converted mana cost three or less, or all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. You can mass wipe with Zergo on the field. He won't care. Everything else will die, and you get to swing in for the kill. Next, we have Cleansing Nova, which is either destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts or enchantments. So you get to choose one of the two. Next, we have Kaya's Wrath, which is destroy all creatures, and you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control that were destroyed this way. You won't really be getting a lot of life off this, considering Zergo will probably be the only creature you'll be playing in this deck, especially multiple times. However, destroying everybody else's creatures is always really, really good. And lastly, we have single combat. Each player chooses what creature or planeswalker they control and sacrifices the rest. And players can't cast creatures or planeswalkers until the end of your next turn. So you're targeting Zergo with this, obviously, and then everybody else has to choose one creature. Now, pair this with following madcap skills, and you're basically going to be swinging in with, a, with Zergo and connecting no matter what. Next, we have some extra cards that don't have enough of a category for them. First, we have Increasing Ambition, which is our only tutor in the deck. I decided to choose Increasing Ambition over Diabolic Tutor for two reasons. One, you get two tutors off this. And two, not only do you get to double tutor, but if you decide to flashback Increasing Ambition, you get to tutor for two cards. This is the main reason I put it in. It is one more mana to cast it instead of Diabolic Tutor, but nonetheless, you get to still, you get to do it. And having something that can effectively tutor you for three cards is more effective than having you get a card that only tutors you for one. Next, we have Phoresis, which equip creature has Infect, which is another Infect card in this deck. We just sneak in. It's a little bit more obvious than Tainted Strike, but giving Zergo Infect nonetheless is still scary for our opponents. Next, we have Assemble the Legion. So I use Assemble the Legion to muster no pun intended, a small little board of red and white soldiers, considering Zergo won't really have vigilance in this deck. So our opponents will be swinging in with their creatures. And so having a board other than just Zergo and having some expendable uh, creatures is really good and really helpful, especially when you don't want to get swung in for 20. Next, we have Danitha Capuchin Paragon, which gives all our equipments and aura spells one less to cast. And she has First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink herself. So you can gain some life back off her, but most importantly, you're using it for the equipment spells costing one less to equip. Next, we have On Sarah's Wings, which will give Enchanted Creature Legendary, kind of redundant with Zergo, but the most important is the plus one, plus one, Flying, Vigilance, and Lifelink. So giving Flying to Zergo gives him Evasion, but having Vigilance and Lifelink as well is really really good considering he doesn't need to tap when he attacks and you get to gain at least eight life off zergo when he swings the last two are both sieges they're outpost siege and palace siege so outpost siege will net you a card if you're using cons which you're almost always and i mean when i mean almost always i mean always always using cons for this one and palace siege you can swap between the two you're mostly going to be using this for its dragon's ability to make opponents lose two life and you gain two life. That way you're whittling down, whittling down your opponents two life at a time each upkeep and you're still swinging with a gigantic Zergo. And we come to our penultimate category, which is our ramp. This deck is not fast with mana, so it needs a lot of good rocks. So first are our Boros, Orzov, and Rakdos Signets. They're the standard Signets you'll see in each deck. And each one of these signets will cover our basic requirements for mana. Next, we have Burnished Heart, which 
is a 2-2 that you can sacrifice and get two basic lands and put them onto the battlefield, which is ramp in colors that can't really ramp. Next, you have Commander Sphere, which is a mana rock that you get to sacrifice to draw a card. Then you have Expedition Map, which is a one drop that you get to sacrifice the next turn and search for a land, whichever land you need at that point in time, and put it into your hand. Next, we have Hedron Archive, which will give you two mana, or you can tap two and tap and sacrifice the Hedron Archive to draw some extra cards. The same thing with Mind Stone, except it's two mana. You got to only add one mana and you tap one, tap and sack Mind Stone to draw one card. And last, we have Skyclave Relic, which I find is a much better Darksteel ingot, considering it has Kicker and you can make two extra copies of it on the field if you have the six mana to spend for it and its kicker cost. And lastly, we're going to get to our lands, which is the most important pieces in this deck. We're running 35 lands. We've already discussed Axe Guard Armory, so we're going to get into Cathedral War. It comes into play tapped and taps for one colorless, which may not be helpful at first, but it has Exalted, so whenever a creature attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Most of the time, you're attacking with Zergo alone, so he's going to get boosted by plus one, plus one. We have Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, which is our basic little land tutors. And we have Myriad Landscape, which is, comes into play tapped, and you tap two and sacrifice it to search up for two basic lands and put onto the battlefield tab. It also taps for a colorless. Next, we have Misfil, which I've come to realize is a very strong yet cheap card. And I'm not saying cheap as in bad, I'm saying cheap as in... Price-wise, it is dirt cheap. It comes into play tapped, and you get to tap it for a white, which already fixes you for if you need white. But the second ability to put a card from your graveyard on the bottom of the library is extremely strong. But you're only limited if, as long as you have two or more white permanents on the field. Then we have Rocky Tar Pit, which is a budget version of a fetch land, but at least gets you a swamp or a mountain onto the field. But it comes into play tapped, the only caveat to that. Next, we have Slayer Stronghold. It'll tap for a colorless, but the white and red ability to tap and give plus two plus oh and vigilance and haste until end of turn is really strong. Zergo doesn't need haste, he already has it, but giving vigilance and plus two plus oh, still very scary. Then we have Sun Home, Fortress of the Legion. Again, uh, the second ability, the two and red and white, giving double strike on a land to Zergo is concerning and very scary in and of itself. And lastly, we're running eight mountains, 11 plains, and seven swamps. And so that's how you build Zergo Sunforger, a strong commander with a very handy and quite powerful equipment that can handle most situations thrown at it. For this build, we're over our budget of $50 by a very large margin. It's $17.31. This is slightly more expensive than most of our brews on this channel, yet we're considering fluctuating card prices on all these cards and a more robust build to Zergo, especially with Sunforger. And that's it for today's video. Did you guys enjoy this brew or do you have any card suggestions or recommendations I should put in this deck? Please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. That's the only way you're going to be notified of any future video that comes out. I upload every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and every video has a premiere to it. So set your clocks for 11 a.m. every Friday. The decklist will be in the show notes down below, along with our social medias. So that's going to keep you up to date with all of us. And if you want any recommendations, or if you want to suggest future video ideas, please get on, get at me on my socials. I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, I have a Facebook. Get at me there. Please don't be shy. I'm a very friendly person and I respond very, very quickly. With that being said, stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to be announcing a contest. The very first one for General Warfare. So stay tuned. That's going to be celebrating our three years on YouTube. Three years on YouTube for general warfare that's a milestone even for myself like i don't never thought i would ever see three years with this channel honestly just from how it evolved just in the last couple of months just going from gameplay videos to deck text to general general discussion videos i've seen it grow and i and correct me if i'm wrong but i feel my content has gone much better in the last couple of months no try no um no ego attached and this is just and no humble bragging i this is just an observation i've noticed 
So, like I said, stay tuned for tomorrow. I will be announcing a... So, stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll be announcing the contest at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next Friday. Cheers, everybody.